There are a ton of options for crafted weapons in Genshin Impact, especially with the five new recipes that just got added. We went over the best crafted weapons that you can choose from in 2.0, guys. So let's start out right here with the prototype Rancor. We're going to go through the swords first. The prototype Rancor is still your generic good sort of physical carry weapon. However, there's not a ton of physical carry sword users in the game yet. There is some like Kea though. So if you're using a physical carry character, the prototype Rancor is pretty good. It also increases your attack and defense with certain stacks, up to four stacks here as well. So this can help you out if you're a brand new player, prototype Rancor, you're investing in someone like Kea, physical damage only, then this weapon can be good for you there. Now, next up is going to be the Iron Sting. The Iron Sting, a little mastery. This is going to be pretty good if you're using someone like Kaza or the main character in the animal form you're doing an elemental mastery build here so this is gonna be very nice for maxing out your swirls and all the other different reactions you can get from swirling animo all around the area maybe you swirl a bunch of different electrolyzed stuff for the electrolyzed team comp maybe you're doing a swirl overload team comp that is very good there only do this sword though for em stacking character this is the new crafted weapon for swords and it's so strong for certain characters so it does have an okay base attack lore amongst most four star weapons here but it has a very nice percentage attack bonus and the real thing that makes the stick out is the new ability succession seeds every time you do an elemental skill you'll get one seed you can have up to three seeds when you elemental burst you're gonna get a refund on your elemental burst so this is very useful for characters that you're having a hard time keeping their elemental burst maxed out and they have a really expensive one that's very strong Someone like Ayak can do this very well here. And if you max this thing out, it can give you a ton of energy back. We're talking 30 to 36 energy that it's going to get regen here after you Elemental Burst. And that's a huge way to go towards maxing out your Elemental Burst to get it back up. So if you have a character with a short cooldown of Elemental Burst, but it's pretty energy hungry, look for this weapon. It's very strong, actually. Prototype Crescent here is actually pretty powerful when it comes to characters who want to charge attack. So this one here, uh, Ganyu, very strong bow for Ganyu for a four star bow here because you want to charge check with Ganyu. You want to hit them in the face for that critical hit that gives you an automatic crit. But that's not all. You're going to get a large attack percent bonus here from the prototype Crescent. If you max this thing out up to 72%. A little bit of an interesting one. This is a physical damage bow here. And normal attacks and charge attacks increase your attack speed. This weapon, I wouldn't really uh, bet on crafting, guys. You need a physical damage carry main the only real character that can utilize this is if you're trying to do like a main carry official physical damage all in you can utilize this bow there outside of that not going to be good for yomia because physical damage is not going to buff her fire damage right her pyro damage it does give her that attack speed buff but that physical damage is an entirely wasted stat now this little guy here is where you get the hama yumi bow which is a new crafted bow from inazuma you have to go around and collect these shells every day and give them some give them the shells so you can pick a treasure chest of your choice and there's an rng chance you'll get the new crafted recipe for the bow here so the hama yumi is very strong pretty much for like one character in the game that's gonna be yoimiya so this is gonna be an awesome bow for her it's got Pretty low base attack for about 454 at cap here, but it does give you 55.1% attack as well. And the effect here is it increases your normal attack damage by 16% and charge attack by 12% at refinement rank one. But if you have 100% energy, then that effect is doubled. If you max this bow out R5 it, it's gonna be 32% normal attack, which is really good for Yomiya because if you're at 100% energy, it's gonna be 64% normal attack damage. If you have this thing at high refinement ranks, it is going to be better than a uh, rust of lesser refinement rank. So keep that in mind there. If you're trying to main Yomiya for this bow and good luck getting it from your boy here, uh, Takashi. Now let's move into some claymores here. The prototype archaic, the OG. If you're using some sort of offensive based claymore character, this is going to be your go to bread and butter because it gives you attack percent, has very high base attack for a four star. And then that proc does have a very lengthy cooldown but it's going to do a decent amount of damage there it's not going to be the reason you wear this weapon this weapon's more or less just for that stat stick attack percent and base attack which is a fantastic weapon there especially if you're doing elemental damage in conjunction with your physical damage from your claymore character the other weapon that a lot of people compare this to is this no tombed star silver depending on what character you're using one of them will be slightly better than the other but they're basically neck and neck this one gives you physical damage bonus and then on top of that it has another proc as well that can do aoe damage here and if the enemy is afflicted by cryo debuff it's going to do much more damage there this is also just like we talked about as stat stick same base attack the difference is you trade attack percent for physical damage so if you're using a character that's largely physical damage this one's going to do 
wonder speed if you're using a character that's largely physical damage but still does a lot of extra elemental damage look for the prototype arcade. now then we have the white blind which if you're a noel main this is your jam this is like a seven star weapon for her max this refinement ranks out it's going to be amazing for you gives a large amount of defense percent and gives you a both attack and defense percent so you're going to attack percent then you're going to get defense percent and then when you elemental on a burst that defense percent is going to go into your attack as well which is a massively amazing thing here for noel so if you're a noel main i see you guys on the channel definitely craft this white blind now last but not least here is going to be the new crafted claymore this thing has mid-tier base attack, energy recharge on it, and increases your elemental skill damage by 6% at refinement rank 1. After your elemental skill hits an opponent, you lose 3 energy, but generate 3 every 2 seconds for 6 seconds. So that means that you're going to get 9, but lose 3, so you get plus 6. If you max this thing out, it's going to go lose 3, gain 18, so you actually gain 15 energy every time you do damage with your elemental skill, and this can occur once every 10 seconds. So this weapon is pretty amazing for Beidou, especially if you're having problems getting her energy back, maybe running her in a single Electro team. You're not using Fischl, you're not using the main uh, character in Electro form. This can go a long way, especially if you refine this weapon. Energy recharge, she needs a little bit of that, especially if you're using this weapon, but this weapon gives you a ton of energy back. Her element burst costs 80. This can give you a large amount. Remember, this can proc every 10 seconds there, which is quite awesome. Has the energy recharge to boost the amount of particles you get from her perfect counter back. And this weapon's gonna be very nice for Beidou. Crafted Catalyst. Now we have a lot of different crafted catalysts now. And this one is still gonna probably stun the task of time. There's not a whole lot of characters that want to use this at the moment, but the more characters that we get, they can work catalysts. And maybe we'll have one that scales off of HP at some point. This one will be very powerful, giving you extra heals from your HP scaling heals and possibly extra damage from your HP scaling damage. On top of that, using your elemental burst is going to regenerate energy for your whole party in HP on top of that. This is a fantastic choice for crafting a catalyst. The Mapamara is the other one here. Elemental mastery, high base attack, and then triggering an elemental reaction grants 8% elemental damage bonus for 10 seconds. This is very similar to the iron sting that we talked about here. EM base gives you damage bonus for triggering reactions. Now we just talked about how those were kind of not combos they don't really work too well because if you're going for elemental mastery trying to swirl out of your mind the damage bonus doesn't affect your swirl it doesn't affect your reactions and if you're going for damage bonus your elemental mastery doesn't affect your skill damage so it's a little bit of a hit and miss there this one a lot of people used it early on a lot of people still like it a lot of people use it on sucrose if they don't have sacrificial fragments and if, but if you have a sacrificial fragment just use that on sucrose instead shin ring now everyone is asking is this weapon good this thing is kind of dookie all right can i say dookie right without getting demonetized this thing's pretty dookie here so wrapping up catalyst we have the frost bear from dragon spine attack percent base attack and hitting enemies has a chance to do additional damage this is just kind of like an okay weapon if you need a dps crafted catalyst this is the one you go for because it has decent base attack as well as attack percent so it's got those offensive damage oriented stats and you'll just get a little extra damage from the frost burial you probably won't even have the cryo on them at all times because most catalyst characters do nothing but elemental damage so you'll be taking the cryo off with all the different reactions in the game so you're never really going to hit 200 in this day and age but if you need to craft the dps catalyst this is the one to aim for crescent pike is actually still going to nickel and dime your opponent to death here so physical damage rosaria really likes this thing physical damage if you want to go for it Xing Ling build back in the day with her fast attack proc this thing over and over is awesome here so it gives you physical damage very high base attack the highest of all four star spears and then when you pick up an orb or a particle your normal charge attacks deal an additional damage amount equal to 20 percent of your attack now this is not a 20 percent damage bonus this is you do an extra attack every time you hit somebody now when you attack every time you hit somebody and pull arms do multiple hits you're going to get an extra attack basically every time you hit with a 40 percent mod so think of it as adding an extra mod on top of the mod now, the other weapon that you can compare that to is the dragon spear spear here physical damage bonus lower base attack and does have a proc for damage here but this one has a 10 a second cooldown and it's just like the snow tomb star silver where it can do a large 200 bonus this weapon if you're going for a physical based polearm carry is going to be inferior in every way than the crescent pike kitan cross spear 44 attack 24 elemental mastery increases elemental skill damage by six percent after an elemental skill hits an opponent the character loses three energy or regenerates three energy every two seconds for the next six seconds now this weapon can be pretty phenomenal on one character shing ling remember you lose three energy when your elemental skill deals damage but then you gain three every two seconds for the next six seconds so you lose three but then you gain nine if you max this thing out you'll lose three and then you'll gain uh 
a whopping amount 18 that's gonna net you 15 energy there so it's gonna give you elemental mastery on top of that because you're gonna be doing in the good old party that we talked about national team a lot of melts a lot of vaporizes and this can help you out a ton now if you already have a maxed out pavonius or a maxed out five star weapon don't worry about this we're talking about four star weapons to four star weapons this can be good in that one scenario outside of that i wouldn't really think about this weapon all that often there are a ton of weapons to craft in Genshin Impact. Hopefully this guy's helped you out a little bit. If you want to see more stuff, subscribe and come back for more, and I'll see you in the next one.